Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared and just as I'm starting this video, there's a large rocket attack taking place on, uh, it looks like the Tel Aviv area. I'm using that a little bit. Yeah, it's south of Tel Aviv. You can see it's sizable. Uh, I didn't intend to start the video this way, but this is how it goes. So, um, I feel like I've been neglecting the, the weather and natural disaster aspect uh, of this channel. It's been a while since I've visited some of my spreadsheets, tracking earthquakes and uh, wildfires and other things. And th there's a lot of updates. <laughs> I have a lot of updates for you. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. You know, one of the purposes of this channel is to look for the signs of the times and uh, see the judgments that are coming upon the earth. And they are happening, and they're happening in places that you uh, don't typically see them. So um, we're going to look at that in just a minute here. Looks like maybe this... Oh, it's still going. Uh, this is a more sizable one. It's like medium-large. Uh, so, you know, I, I have a couple things to share with you. you. You're probably already aware of some of these things. Oh, my gosh. This just keeps going. I cannot believe that this is happening as I'm starting this video. By the way, I'm recording this on Saturday afternoon, and I'm planning to schedule it on Monday morning. So um, I always like try to get ahead with my videos if I can, so I can just consistently provide you with videos the same times every day. I schedule them at 7 a.m. and then 4 p.m. Central Time. And these rockets just keep coming. Again, I'm surprised that they still have the ability to launch these rockets. Uh, I know that the war, you know, it's ongoing. It's not like they've destroyed Hamas yet, but I would have thought that they would have reduced their capabilities. You know, they're they're clearing tunnels right now, and they're doing uh, close uh, or small arms combat and uh, close quarters combat and stuff like that. So... But I don't know. I guess I guess they still have it. They still have it in them to sit, to fire off these rockets. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So um, we've had this uh, bomb cyclone that's gone off. Uh, I say gone off like it's a bomb. Uh, Storm Sirion that's hit Europe, and what you're looking at here is Italy, and this is probably some of the most dramatic footage that I've seen so far when it comes to these uh, flash floods and cars that are being swept away. Look at that. Look at all those cars. They're just... Bit t and then there's one, when the camera goes back, there's one where the lights are on. So I don't know if like there's somebody in that car or who had recently been in that car. There it is right there. Can't really see inside it very well. But... uh. This is just a taste of some of the things that we're going to go over today. So, um, okay, so let's start with this. <clears throat> let's start with let's start with the update on the Flood the Earth Challenge. We're at 7,230 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared, trying to get to 10,000. And we have 762 people that have joined. We're trying to get to 1,000 with that. So consider joining if you haven't already. Leave your uh, shares in the comments section of any video use hashtag flood, or you can send me an email. Also use hashtag flood in the subject line. So keep up to, keep up the good job, everybody. And, uh, oh, no, and somebody had reported that there was a new baptism. And uh, they hadn't reported this person before uh, meeting with the missionaries, so that's why you have an update on the missionaries, too. So this person got baptized. And according to the comment, they got baptized because of somebody else who had previously been baptized as a result of the, the Flood the Earth Challenge. So uh, they brought this person along with them, and now we're at 32 total baptisms. So um, I don't know. I'll fix that later. I got to update the thing over there. Okay, let's move on. So if you didn't hear, <clears throat> there was uh, recently a deadly earthquake in Nepal, this is on New York Times. Earthquake in western Nepal kills more than 150. So that, that that's a pretty good amount. It's not as bad as some of the other earthquakes that we've seen this year, but 
it's still a pretty large amount. And we're going to look at the other earthquakes this year so you can uh, kind of compare them. The death toll from a powerful midnight earthquake that struck western Nepal climbed to more than 150 people on Saturday as authorities and aid organizations rushed to provide relief for thousands of families stranded under the open sky in fearful of aftershocks. Officials cautioned that the death toll was likely to rise as communication was restored with areas that had been cut off. So, I don't know. By the time that you're watching this, it's probably higher. Uh, maybe that's something you'd like to Google. And I'll um, probably update, update that in a later video. After the initial quake, families and villages spent much of the night under, out under the open sky, fearing aftershocks. With about 5,000 houses destroyed or damaged, according to initial estimates, made by disaster management authorities. Entire villages prepared for another night outside. Quote, now look at this. There was not a single house standing tall. Every house was damaged. Only dirt flying under the sky. Said uh, Tapendra Rakoya, or Rakaya, 29, who was visiting family in a village in the Jajarkot district of a Hindu festival. Uh, for a Hindu f festival. Quote, no one is staying indoors due to fears of aftershocks. Everyone is either under a tent or open in the sky. End quote. So an entire village. Uh, I don't know how large that village is. I know that um, the building codes probably aren't really as strict over there. Uh, a, a lot of those houses are probably not uh, built very well. But nevertheless... According to according to Tapendra, not a single house standing tall. That is crazy. And that's dramatic. Okay. Don't know if I had anything else. No. Okay, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But let's go ahead and look at the other earthquakes this year. So I rely heavily on this Wikipedia page for earthquakes. It's called List of Earthquakes 2023. And uh, they categorize them. They show you the total number. We'll look at that in a little bit. But right now, I want to focus on this table called by death toll. And this includes all the earthquakes this year that have had a death toll of at least 10. So by far, the largest one was the one earlier this year in Turkey. It was that same one that split the Mount of Olives in Turkey, uh, which I feel like that is a sign. Um that we're going to be seeing that happen in uh, Jerusalem with the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. But you had that to basically start off the year. And then um, on, on President Nelson's birthday, or no, the day before President Nelson's birthday, we had this earthquake in Morocco, almost at 3,000. And then the recent one on October 7th, the same day of the, that the war started uh, in Afghanistan, in Herat, there was an earthquake that killed uh, almost 1,500 people. And so the one in Nepal that we're talking about right now, it's currently at the number four spot for the year. And then you have some, um, you have some other ones, Afghanistan, Ecuador, and then another one in Turkey um, around the same time as this first one, uh, but they killed significantly less people. So that's what this year is looking like so far. Now, Let's take a look at other years. I have this spreadsheet, and I've updated this. So <clears throat> here are the totals as far, like when you um, tally up all the earthquakes by their magnitude. We still haven't seen any 9.0s or 8.0s this year. The last time that we saw an 8.0 was back in 2021, and we actually saw three of them that year. Um, and as you can see... Uh, on average, I, I guess if you were to average it out, just roughly speaking and looking at it, there's probably about one a year on average. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was one this year, just based on this trend. But we haven't had it so far. Uh, since the last time that I updated it, the 7.0 range has not changed. It's still at 16. But 16 already matches and surpasses um, all the years going back to 2016. So 
so in that sense, it's it's kind of been a worse year, and we still have you know like another couple months to go. Let's we'll see what happens with that. Uh, these numbers went up over here for the 6.0s and the 5.0s, and also the 4.0s. Okay, and then over on the left hand side, if you if you look at um, if you just compare the colors, the shades of gray, um, this year doesn't really stand out as far as like the total of earthquakes that are above 6.0 or above 5.0. Um, it looks pretty similar, if not less than previous years. But that number doesn't necessarily matter. The more important number, I think, is how many people are dying from these earthquakes. And uh, it's been a bad year. Relatively speaking, it's been a bad year as far as uh, the death toll goes. So the total, when you add them all up together, there have been 63,908 people that have died from earthquakes, roughly, of course. Um, the deadliest one was 59,000. That was the Turkey earthquake. But when you add them all up together, it's almost 64,000. Uh, but the rank right here has not changed. So going back to 1985, uh, this is still the fifth deadliest year for earthquakes, going back to 1985. Uh, the number four place, it was 2008 with 88,000 that died. And then the number one place was 2004. Uh, this is because there was that uh, really big earthquake and then ensuing uh, tsunami in Indonesia. You may remember that. Uh, by the way, that was the same year that President Oaks gave a talk about the second coming and he listed all the signs of the second coming. And it was before that happened. But anyway, this one may not be the true first place because the one in 2010 uh, this was the Haiti earthquake, and um, the the tally on that is uncertain, but it's at least more than 200,000, uh, and this was strictly because of an earthquake. This was the Haiti earthquake. There was no uh, tsunami associated with it, so this may actually have been the deadliest earthquake, but it's hard to separate the number of dead from tsunami and earthquake in 2004. So anyway... Those were the two year worst years, 2004, 2010. And uh, as of right now, unless there's any other earthquakes uh, with large death tolls, this year will be at the number five spot, which is something to take note of, I think. So that's where we're at with that. And it will, it'll be interesting to see if there's any 8.0 earthquakes or 9.0. Okay. On uh, X, B and O News, here's a, a picture of Nepal. A uh, strong earthquake hits western Nepal, destroying many homes and killing at least 37 people. Well, it's way more than that. Um, but that news came out after this was posted, I'm sure. Okay, let's start talking about wildfires. So here's a pretty dramatic uh, graphic. This account is uh, Dr. Robbie Bishop Taylor. The scale of the fires currently burning across northern Australia is pretty unfathomable. This animation visualizes just the last two months of fire captured by D DEA hotspots. For context, the map covers an area larger than France, Spain, and Germany combined. So, um, yeah, that looks pretty bad. <laughs> that looks pretty bad. And uh, it kind of makes me think, I don't know about you, but it makes me think back to a few years ago when Australia was hit with a really bad wildfire season. So let's go ahead and look at some of the details and the numbers. We're going to look at um, all these different wildfires taking place over uh, the last like 20 years. Uh, there's been a lot going on. But first, let's look at this. This is from BBC. Australia fires dreaded bushfire season turns deadly. As more than 100 fires burned across the country on Thursday, Queensland officials said two people have died in major blazes near the town of Tara. Two people are also, also died fighting fires in New South Wales last week. Authorities have for months warned a cocktail of conditions means this bushfire season will be extremely dangerous. Later on in the article, Australia has been on high alert for bushfire danger. This is because of years of rain-driven plant growth. 
which is drying out after the warmest winter on record, and an El Nino effect summer that promises more hot and dry months. The country has reeled from disaster to disaster in recent years as it feels the effects of climate change. Earlier this month, towns, uh, towns in Victoria were threatened by bushfires, only to be forced to prepare for floods just hours later. The current bushfire season also comes after several years of record-breaking floods, which followed the black summer bushfires in 2019 to 2020, which themselves followed years of drought. The world's top climate scientists have warned that the future, that a future, uh, I'm not going to even read that. I shouldn't have highlighted that. Climate change, we all better do our part. Make sure that you recycle and stop driving your cars. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot going on in, uh, in Australia. And um, thinking back to 2019 to 2020, that was a really bad year. I guess the name of it was the Black Summer. And uh, we'll have to see how this year goes. But already it's not looking good. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Now, I've put together this um, spreadsheet right here, which keeps track of the largest and deadliest and most destructive wildfires. And it's color-coded. If it's in this red color, it's the largest. If it's in the black color, it's the deadliest. If it's in this dark gray color, it was the most destructive. So I have some updates here. I have three new updates. Um, and I do my best, believe me, I do my best trying to find the largest wildfires, the deadliest wildfires, but it's not as easy as you would think. Uh, there's not as many resources as you think. One of the best ones is uh, Wikipedia. And uh, I went to their article, Wildfires in 2023. And uh, they have articles for you know, where there were major wildfires. And I went thing by thing by thing by thing, went through them all. And uh, there's only been a few new things that I've added to my spreadsheet. But I'm doing my best to look everywhere and have as much data as possible. So let me zoom in here. We'll start down here. Now, this was already on here. We already knew this year that Canada was having its worst wildfire season in recorded history. That's for the entire country, um, all the wildfires put together, okay? It's not a single wildfire. It's all the wildfires for the entire Canadian wildfire season of 2023. So the last time I updated this on September 15th, it was at 42.7 million acres, and uh, that has grown to 45.4 acres. So it's grown, you know, significantly. Uh, that's currently where it stands. And uh, at this point, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this until just now. This now surpasses the 2021 Russian wildfire season. Russia had its worst wildfire season in 2021, and it got to 44.8 million. So this is, this is almost a million acres more than Russia. That is crazy. In fact, is it the largest one that I have on here? It is. I'm going to have to later. I just sorry, I just realized this. I'm going to have to go and see if like this is basically record breaking for the world. Although I don't know if anyone like counts it that way like Oh, the, the country with the single biggest wildfire season. I don't know if there's anything like that. But I think this is right. Holy cow. Um, okay, so that's crazy. Okay, so that's one of the updates. And then the next two are for Nova Scotia. Uh, now, I have two different rows. One is for the largest single wildfire in Nova Scotia history, the Barrington Lake fire. Uh, I have updated numbers for that. It went from 60 or from 56.8 to 58.1 thousand acres. So since the last time I recorded this, it's grown and uh, it's actually under control now. So anyway, so that's where it's at. And then for Nova Scotia as a province, 
and taking all the wildfires into account, it has a, it has had its worst wildfire season in recorded history, with a total of 61.7 thousand acres burned, most of those coming from the Barrington Lake fire, obviously. Okay, so 2023, uh, there's been a lot of records when it comes to wildfires in 2023. When you go back in time, not so much. 2022, uh, the only notable thing there was the New Mexico Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak uh, fire. So just that one. In 2021, we just have these two, Russia and Colorado. 2020 was pretty active. Australia, Washington, Colorado, and then two Californias. Okay, so just so you get a feel for what other years have looked like. And it's not that I have everything on here. I, I wish that I did, but I think that I have all the major things. So, you know, so, you know let's look at the map. So, for example, uh, there may have been like large wildfires, you know, in some obscure place that I haven't caught or places that don't do really good at keeping records. So say like over here in Suriname or French um, Guyana, uh, maybe they've had their lar their largest wildfire, but it's not really reported or didn't make very much news. So I really do think that I have all the important ones um, for the most part. Let me zoom out. So my spreadsheet starts really in 2004. There is this one back in uh, 1988, Wyoming had its largest wildfire, but uh, really, since 2004 until now, you've had all these states and territories and provinces and countries um, that have had their largest or deadliest or most destructive wildfires. In 2004, that's the same year that we, that we had that big uh, earthquake and tsunami in Indonesia that we were just talking about with the earthquakes. It's almost like 2004 was a, a turning point of sorts. Again, that's the year that President Oaks gave that really interesting talk about the second coming. And it was one of a kind. It's the only talk that I know of where somebody uh, did like a bullet point list of the signs of the times. And he encouraged everybody to look for the signs of the times. And lo and behold, since that time, there have been crazy things going on. Look at all these wildfires. Alaska, Texas, Utah, Idaho, Australia, Arizona, Oregon, Montana, the European Union, Nevada, British Columbia, California, Greece, Bolivia, on and on and on. And now, when we look just at 2023, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight separate entries for just this year. Man, this is a compression of events, in my opinion. Uh, British Columbia beat its previous record. The previous record was back in um, 2018 with the Tweedsmere co Complex fire. But this year's fire, the Donny Creek fire, uh, was larger than that. So uh, we had Lahaina which was the deadliest uh, wildfire in Hawaiian state history. Um, I've tried to see if it was like the largest or most destructive. I haven't seen anything to confirm that. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the most destructive in terms of like buildings and homes and stuff destroyed because it, it destroyed the entire city almost. But I haven't been able to verify that. The only thing that I know is that it was the deadliest wildfire in Hawaiian state history. Um, <clears throat> Louisiana, we've talked about Louisiana. It had its largest wildfire in state history. The European Union had its largest single wildfire. Uh, but the, the largest wildfire season for the European Union was back in 2017. Okay. And, uh, it was in Greece. So not only was it the European Union's largest wildfire, but it was also Greece's largest wildfire. So, uh, just things are crazy. I'm trying my best to keep track of the cause, like if it was arson, lightning, some other thing. That's a little bit hard to do. 
it's going to take more research, but I don't know if fires, if like these record breaking fires aren't signs of the times, I don't know what is. <laughs> and these are large areas, Canada, the United States, European Union, Russia. These are big places. They're big. Uh, look, okay, let's, let's move on to this here. Okay. Nova Scotia saw its most devastating wildfire season on record in 2023. This is from CBC News. Just wanted to read a few things from here. Oh, yeah. Zoom in and then the highlights disappear naturally. This year was by far the most devastating wildfire season on record in Nova Scotia, with blazes burning through more than 25,000 hectares of land in 200 homes across the province. According to the provincial government, a total of 220 wildfires impacted approximately 25,096 hectares uh, this season, which typically runs from April to mid-October. While the total number of wildfires has been higher in previous years, the impacted areas have never been so far reaching. Okay. So previous years have had more wildfires, but this one this year was really bad as far as the reach. This season was devastating, both in terms of how much land was burned, but also its direct impact on Nova Scotia families. And then it gets into some of the numbers of homes destroyed and stuff like that. Let's see. I think that's it from this article. Uh, this is from NASA uh, Earth Observatory, tracking Canada's extreme 2023 fire season. Wildland experts, sorry, wildland fire experts have described Canada's 2023 fire season as record breaking and shocking. Over the course, of a fire season that started early and ended late, blazes have burned an estimated 18.4 million hectares, an area roughly the size of North Dakota. Holy cow. Let's uh, go to Google Earth. For those of you that aren't familiar with uh, U.S. geography, uh, this is North Dakota right here. It's large. It's a large piece of land. Imagine if, like, all this was black because it was all burnt. That would really, really stand out. So that's a lot of land. On average, okay, look at this. On average, just 2.5 million hectares burn in Canada each year. So two and a half compared to this year, 18 and a half. Two to 18. That's a huge difference. While the total number of reported fires uh, has not been unusual, 6,595 by October, a subset of the fires reached extraordinary sizes. Hundreds of fires exceeded 10,000 hectares, or 39 square miles, large enough to be considered, quote-unquote, mega-fires. So hundreds of fires out of the, out of the like 6,600, hundreds of them were considered mega fires. These mega fires were also unusually widespread this season, charring forests from British Columbia and Alberta in the West to Quebec and the Atlantic provinces in the East to the Northwest territories and the Yukon in the North. I think there was something at the bottom. Uh, as of late October 2023, Canada's remarkable fire season was finally slowing down. Dozens of fires were still out of control on October 24th, but winter weather is expected to suppress most of them. However, even winter may not be enough in some cases. Previous research shows that overwintering zombie fires in this region have increasingly begun to smolder underground throughout the winter and remerge in the spring as temperatures rise. That's really weird. <laughs> that is crazy. Fi what? Fires going underground or smoldering. Okay. Smoldering underground and then 
I guess like reigniting in the spring. That is crazy. Um, I should have pulled up Zoom Earth. Let's look at that really quick. And let's do fires. So here's what they have. Yeah, see all these fires that are still, look, this one's over a million acres and it's still out of control. These other ones are, some of these are approaching a million. Like this one, the Ekbon Tower fire. Yeah, it's still going. Look at this one. Uh, one and a half million right here in Northwest Territories. Uh, remember, this was the year that uh, all of Yellowknife was evacuated. That was 20,000 people. The entire town was evacuated. Thankfully, the firefighters were able to stop that uh, fire. But the entire town was evacuated. Um, earlier in the year, we were looking at Kelowna. Uh, there were a number of structures that were destroyed there in very, very apocalyptic scenes. And this was not long after Lahaina. There was also a medical lake near Spokane, Washington, where a sizable part of the town uh, burned down. So there was a lot of destruction by fire this year. Um, let's see. Let me check one more thing. Let's see. Let me go to this. No, no, no. Where is it? Earth. Weather maps. can't remember. Yeah, I think it was this one. This is another way to look at hot spots and fires and stuff. Yeah, so there you go. It's still going on. It's still going on. In the U.S., it wasn't so bad uh, compared to other years, just in Louisiana. And uh, that was as a result of... Um, of arson, but, but still it was its uh, largest wildfire in state history. I think a lot of these like red spots that you see, if I were to guess, I think that these are probably like people burning their fields or maybe other activities taking place that release heat. I'm not exactly sure, but don't think that the entire Eastern United States is on fire. That's not what, what's taking place. Okay. So, um, and also I wanted to remind you of a pretty dramatic event that happened this year because of all that Canadian, uh, all the, all the, because of all those Canadian wildfires, it produced a lot of smoke. And I tracked all the capital cities, uh, that were affected or that saw the Canadian wildfire smoke. And it was a really, really large event. And, uh, you can roughly see it with this polygon that I uh, created on Google earth, uh, you know, so you have all the capital cities here, like Bismarck, North Dakota, Salt Lake City, Denver, Colorado. So these were all the cities that saw the smoke, and some more than others, especially in Washington, D.C., uh, also New York City. I don't have New York City here because it's not a capital city, but New York saw a lot of it. And that caused a lot of apocalyptic scenes, and there were a lot of articles talking about the fact that it looked apocalyptic. And that by itself, I think, is a tool of the Lord to put those ideas in people's minds as a warning. When you see the sun darken and the moon turn to blood and hazy, smoky skies, uh, hopefully that's a warning to you. And it traveled really far south, as far south as Jackson, Mississippi and Montgomery, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, Columbia, South Carolina. It even went all the way across the Atlantic to Lisbon, Lisbon, Portugal, and Madrid, Spain. So this was a really, really big event. That's, that's one way that you can tell just how, how large and how bad the wildfire season was in Canada, that it had this kind of effect. So, yeah, so all that happened. Um, Okay, let's move on from that. Okay, now let's start talking about this uh, storm, Syrian. Um, 
actually I have a graphic or like an animation of it right here from GL Sergio Almazan. And uh, this just basically shows you what happened. Just, you know, uh, here it comes. Da, 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 da. Really dramatic looking. And it was dramatic. Um, it, it affected, a, you know, different parts of Europe. But uh, I'm about to read uh, the areas most affected. So this is from Axios. Deadly storm Sirion lashes Europe with heavy rain and flooding. Okay. The greatest weather impacts were felt in southwestern England, uh, the UK island of Jersey in the English Channel, northwestern France, and Italy's Tuscany region. Okay, so let's go over here. So th basically like right here, kind of like this area, or let's just go with what it said. It's like southwestern England, like right here, and then northwestern France up here, and then uh, this part right here, not not right there, this part of Italy right here where this group of place markers are at. Okay. Large areas of Tuscany were hit by record rains and heavy flooding that swept away cars, shut down highways, and knocked out power to thousands of homes and buildings. Power outages and downed trees were reported in Brittany, France's northwesternmost region, and 82 flood warnings were in effect in the UK due to the storm. Um, okay, that's all from that article. And then uh, I just have this up because as of right now, uh, this is a more, a more recent article, uh, storm Syrian leaves seven dead in Italy as torrential rain causes flooding. So I have that updated on my spreadsheet over here. Okay. You see these three new ones. Um, so we have Kenya. We'll look at that a little bit later. Nepal with 150 dead, at least 150 dead. And then the seven so far in Italy. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's let's take a look. So this is in France. It says the video from Lampal Pluazel in northwest France is absolutely bananas. The wall literally gets sucked out by the wind from Storm Syrian. In case you in case you missed the video where I covered this, uh, this was a storm that had hurricane force winds. And uh, if I remember right, uh, up to Category 2 hurricane force winds. That was basically the equivalent of what this was. So I, I've never seen something like that happen before. Like what you're seeing right here, this that is bananas. That is crazy. So that's Northwest France. Let's go on to the next one. Here's the one that we were looking at uh, earlier in the video. Uh, it almost looks unreal. Those are not toy cars in a bathtub. Uh, those are real cars in Italy. This says, uh, this is absolutely insane. Serious flooding now in Figli Figline, Figline di Prato, north of Florence in Italy. So let's kind of toggle back and forth between the map and this. So that video is from up here, uh, Figline. Figline, I don't know. You tell me. If you know how to pronounce that, let me know. Let's go to this one. This looks like it might be the same video, but... Or may I don't know. It looks like it's like the same location, but there's those cars and they're floating. Okay. David Ulrich... Uh, Pontedera Hospital in Pizza, Italy, or Pisa, Italy, on November 2nd. We are in a planetary emergency. It's kind of weird because I feel like this is maybe the third time or so that we've seen flooding inside a hospital. I don't know why that's becoming so common, but... And you know what? I don't have pizza on there. I'm going to take this guy's word for it. We'll see where that is. 
Pizza, Pizza Hut. Uh, I think it's probably this. Where is that? Okay. Let's just say it's that. It's fine. It's not like this has to be 100% accurate. I'll do that. I'm going to zoom out. Put this in here. And then... No, wrong thing. Sorry. Let me um, change this. Zoom out. Whoa. Let me just let me just mess it up. Properties. We'll drag this over here to pizza. So maybe it's more kind of like that. We'll say it's more like that, based on this guy's report. Uh, floodwaters inundate Santo Stefano Hospital in Prato as Storm Syrian hits Tuscany, leaving at least six dead. And uh, we know now it's it's actually seven. And it seems that this is a different hospital. That was Pontadera Hospital, and this is Santo Stefano Hospital in Prato. And Prato is over here. Okay. Earth 4 tomorrow. Severe flooding batters Tuscany, Italy, as Storm Syrian hits the hits the firefighters of whatever in frenzy pistoia pisa and prato step up to launch dozens of rescue operations amid amidst intense rain and strong winds the heck is going on here like there's water like going through that building it's like coming from the other side i guess it's kind of crazy looking Okay, next, Sentinella 35, Italia, uh, floods in Sayano. Mm, I can't read the rest of that. In the, re the Tuscan region, okay, whatever. There you go. Campi Vicencio, Florencia, region of Tuscany. Oh, there, there it is. I didn't know that there was a dump. That was a trash can or a dumpster. I think it was a trash can that was floating away. I didn't think that there was one here because I didn't watch this full thing. <laughs> there it is right there. It's that yellow. It's the yellow trash can. I just, I missed it. I was going too fast. And I failed to notice that there, there it is. You have to have that every single time. David Ulrich, something bad is happening in Italy tonight. Yeah, I'll say. That's pretty bad. Falcoholic, horrific signs of flooding in Italy last night, this morning. This was posted on November 3rd, which was Friday. And this is, there's a shopping cart, so I guess it's a grocery store. Someone wearing leggings. All right, let's move on. And then, okay, so one more time. So this is this is roughly the area. There were two tweets or posts that talked about pizza or pizza, and then most of the action seemed to seems to have been taking place over here. So if we zoom out, this is like the this is the northern part of Italy. Rome is down here, so it's up here. Not as far far north as as uh, Milan. Milan was hit uh, on Halloween, and then just a few days later, you you had this area down here that was hit. Okay, now here let me turn off all these. Let's just focus on October and November. Now we're going to be going down to Kenya. There was a storm down there. And there was flooding in all these areas right here. Um, two killed as flooding hits Kenya, sweeping away homes and destroying roads, officials say. I don't have any highlights from this, but let's just look at the videos. 
I don't know if this is the same event. This was posted on the 28th of October and all the rest of them come from, uh, I think like today and yesterday, but, uh, two people have died while more than 200 families have been displaced by the flash floods in Northern Kenya's Marsa beat County. Uh, yeah, that, this looks like a very dangerous place to be right here. It's like a very wide flow of water. I would not want to be there. Flooding in Mombasa, Kenya. Um, now, Nairobi is the capital city, but Mombasa is the capital city of, uh, I can't remember what it said, but like the county or the region or whatever. Uh, that it is in. So I'm putting this down as a capital city. If you're new, this, this spreadsheet actually started by tracking capital cities. Uh, but then I decided to expand it and just capture just all these like big events. But I'm still, I'm still keeping track of capital cities the best that I can. If I come across an article, it says that it's a capital city or I think it's a capital city, then I'll confirm it and then I'll put an X in column D right here. The last one that I have before that was Warsaw, Poland, where there was like a big protest. And then before that, Guatemala, Guatemala City with uh, a bunch of flash flooding on the, 20th, the 25th of September. Um, heroic helicopter rescue, helicopter emoji, saves stranded lorry passengers amidst raging floodwaters in Samburu, Kenya. That's great. Citizen TV Kenya, over 2,500 people displaced by floods in Mandera as rains intensify. This is another one. There's like these other statistics, which I wish I could get my hands on and track efficiently, like buildings destroyed, um, the amount of damage in U.S. dollars, uh, people made homeless. And it, it, the information on those things is just sporadic. So it's hard to keep track of. Pretty much the best that I can do is uh, death toll. Disaster tracker flooding in the town of El Wak, Kenya. And according to this date, this was on the 30th of October. So, so yeah, maybe that very first one was part of this flooding event. Maybe it's all the same thing. Heavy rains have battered El Wak. And there's people carrying church pews. I don't know. Chairs or maybe, maybe no, they're not desks. Don't know what those are. I think they're for sitting. Generally, Kaliku says Northern Kenya is experiencing heavy rains. Check out this video courtesy of a local resident showcasing flooding in Elwak. The current flash floods across Mondera, especially Mondera South, is great a risk to all motorists and road users. All right. Disaster tracker flooding in Gambela, Kenya, 3rd of November. Volcoholic, more video of the flooding in Mombasa. And then the last one, Enoch. <laughs> uh, Enoch, Mombasa is flooding. Okay, so there's just so much going on in the world. So what I have right now selected is um, October and November. Uh, there's probably some that I'm missing. I... I you know, I just got to keep digging and see what else I can find. I realize that, like, for those of you that are on X, I realize that there's, like, videos of other places. Like, recently, there's been a lot of videos of flooding in Mecca. And, you know, that catches my attention, obviously. Uh, that's the holiest site in Islam. That's where the Kaaba is. That's where all Muslims um, face when they pray, when they, like, do that, that like, kneeling prayer. Um but the thing about it is, even though there's a lot of videos, I can't verify it. There's no, like, reputable news source that confirms that it's happening. So I don't know if those videos are from, like, a long time ago 
or or if they're even from some other place because sometimes people do that either they they don't do their due diligence and verify things or maybe they have nefarious purposes for doing that maybe to get more traffic to their account you know because they have dramatic looking footage but it's you know it's not real but they still get the benefit of uh clicks and traffic and stuff like that so <clears throat> I'm just trying to use my best judgment in trying to capture the ones that are are more easily substantiated. Um, but that's not to say that these other things aren't happening. You know, it may be that certain governments or uh, news sites or, or news companies, they just don't cover it or the coverage doesn't go that far. And on top of that, there's probably a lot of smaller events where it's just not big enough to make the news or it's in a country where they don't have very good news coverage. So what I'm capturing is just like the bigger things that are easy to capture and verify. But even just looking at that, uh, things are pretty dramatic. So for example, with this whole thing with uh, Syrian uh, and then Storm Babbitt, which was before that, between Syrian and Babbitt, uh, you had all this taking place in the United Kingdom in Ireland. These two islands have just been hammered over the last month. It's been crazy. So there's a lot going on there. Italy's getting hit. Um, we have Kenya. We have Yemen right here. Uh, we have these deadly earthquakes that are taking place. Mexico has been pounded by uh, hurricanes within this last couple months. I've been seeing a lot of videos coming out of southern Brazil, like a ton of them. And um, unfortunately, I'm not able to substantiate those, uh, except for in this case, uh, state of Santa Catarina. This was the 3rd of October. I was able to verify that. Here, let me turn on the whole year. There's been a lot going on. So let's let's look at earthquakes, for example, notable earthquakes. There was this one in Ecuador that killed 18. There was this one in Bogota in Colombia. It didn't, it, as far as I know, there's no death toll, but it hit the capital city. That's why I have it on here. So you had those two. And then kind of like in a line almost, you have Morocco. Uh, the day before President Nelson's birthday. Um, I got to update this because, well, let me let me double check. I don't think I updated the map. Yeah, right. No, that's Afghanistan. Go back to September. So that earthquake in Morocco was almost 3,000. So almost 3,000 right there. There were these couple earthquakes at the beginning of the year. This one was the deadliest one with uh, 59,000. And then there was kind of like this follow-up uh, follow one um, later in the month with 11. And then we've had some over here. Afghanistan, this one killed over 2,000 people. Afghanistan, this one killed uh, 21. And then this most recent one in Nepal, uh, which so far is at 150, but they believe that, that's, that it's more. So deadly earthquakes, lots of fires. You know, here's the fires. Here's the, the record-breaking fire for the European Union in Greece. Um, there's another notable fire down here. In Athens, I have the, I have that because Athens is the capital city. Louisiana, Kelowna. We were talking about Kelowna. We talked about Yellowknife that was evacuated, and then of course Lahaina, uh, where the city was almost completely destroyed. We talked about the Canadian wildfire smoke. This whole area right here, roughly, and then. Um, all these blue uh, place marks, these are all locations where you've had crazy flooding. And it's been all over the world. Everywhere. Uh, I don't have any for, for Australia yet. 
or New Zealand or anything like that. But aside from that, it's basically been on every single continent. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, the Middle East, uh, Asia. Not in Antarctica, of course. So a lot of things are happening. A lot of judgments are taking place on the world right now. And it's something that you could easily, um, you know, it could go under the radar unless you're tracking it like this and you keep on top of the news. Uh, the news is reporting it. It's being reported, but it's up to you and me to put it all together into a, a big picture like this. And this is the best way that I know how to do it with spreadsheets and with Google Earth. And um, it tells a story. Again, remember, there's like very notable places that are being hit, like Moscow in uh, July saw the flash flooding in Moscow. Beijing up here on the 1st of August, it had uh, this crazy flooding and it was the most rainfall ever recorded in Beijing, which goes back 140 years. Hong Kong right here, uh, September 8th, same thing, 140 years, the most rainfall they've ever seen. Cyclone Freddy, uh, this was earlier this year. Uh, let's see, March, the longest lasting hurricane slash cyclone slash typhoon. It's all the same thing. The longest living of, of that weather event ever recorded. Um, you know, there's been crazy hail. Uh, like in in uh, eastern Spain, that's destroyed crops. Uh, especially, th there were some vineyards uh, that were destroyed, which I did a video about that because at the same time that that was destroyed, in Portugal, there was this uh, distillery, like this wine distillery, where uh, one of the vats like burst open and it it flooded, uh, just like the floods that you see in these like other videos. It flooded this small town with wine. And it was within the same week that on the other side of the peninsula, there was hail that destroyed these vineyards. And I felt like there was uh, potentially some symbolism in that. Um, gosh, there's just, there's just so much. If you, if you don't think that the signs of the times are happening, uh, you might want to rethink that. It may not be happening to you. Maybe you're in a safe place. And maybe that's because you're gathered into one of the stakes of Zion and you're living righteously in your home, your stake. It's a place of safety and refuge. Not that everybody's going to escape it entirely, but maybe that's why you're not seeing it where you are at. But it sure is happening all over the world. And uh, this is just my imperfect capture of these events. It's obviously much worse than this. And uh, this only it, this only goes back really to May. I have like some events that are before May, but most of this is from May until now. And it's only been what I've been able to capture. So it is pretty bad. And it's probably just going to get worse. Which doesn't mean that we need to be afraid. Just live righteously. Listen to the prophet. Make sure that you take uh, moderate uh, preparations have 72 hour kits, have some food storage and stuff like that, but you don't need to be crazy uh, and insane. And uh, I think you'll be okay. So, oh, and by the way, one last thing before I close out, I have gone back uh, several times, including today, to see what the death toll has been uh, in Libya. You might remember that uh, Storm Daniel, that first affected um, Southeast Europe in Turkey, uh, it came down here, and then it hit, uh, you know, the North African coast right here, especially in, uh, it hit Tunisia, but it also hit Libya. And it was in, I think it was Derna that was the heaviest hit. And that's the one where they're like, they don't, they still don't know how many died. But it's somewhere between 4,000 and 10,000. Yeah, that is a really big number. So we're still waiting on that. Maybe we'll never know how many died, but that happened too. But there's still not really any update from that. Um, okay. Well, all right. That's it. That's it. 
If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.